Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's Partner Web Conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations Tech Talk. Today's topic, GST and GTE Part 4, GSTR Reporting Capabilities. My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. Participation in the meeting today indicates your consent to being included in the meeting recording. Attendees may access the web conference recording within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We do have presenters uh, standing by to respond to your questions throughout the session. Now on to the presentation. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Senior Program Manager Prava Bargava, and supporting Prava on Q&A is Susan Zhang, who is a Senior Software Engineering Lead. So without any further delay, Prava, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Janice. Uh, so today's session is GST uh, Return Capabilities. Uh, this is the area where a lot of changes are coming up. And this is not stable uh, since uh, July 2017 when the G return process was introduced. Uh, it, it, this process is still not as stabilized uh, at the government level as well because government uh, initially uh, introduced the uh, nine returns. Out of that, only the government is only taking the GSTR one, and other re uh, return are more or less in a suspended form, uh, not applicable yet fully. So today I will take you uh, through the return process which we have provided in Dynamics 365 as well as the new changes because from 1st January, the government has made certain important announcement and based on that, a lot of changes are expected in the return process. So we will, I will take you through that as well. And uh, currently, what are the uh, like gaps there and uh, why we are not doing it because the government was introducing the new formats and we are focusing on that. So what would be the new format? What is the new things that we will, I will discuss you as well and uh, display you as well. So initial process which is uh, government provided because this was the initial process which was changed uh, during the uh, last two years as well. So first user, uh, any SSE has to upload the GSTR1 return in which all the supplies detail. Output supply detail has to be disclosed. Output supplies means all registered, unregistered transactions, as well as uh, export, deem export scenario, SEZ sales. Uh, so all these sort of a transaction has to be reported in GSTR1. Uh, then user when upload the GSTR1 detail, a GSTR 2A return is generated. Uh, and this is a 2A is a purchased detail uh, which is based on the supplier detail generated automatically and the uh, supplier has to download the 2A return, has to match with their purchase register detail and if there are any uh, discrepancies are there has to be reject or accept some of the invoices and based on that uh, do certain corrections in the uh, form 2, uh, GSTR 2 because 2A and GST 2 matching has to be done and th on that basis correction has to be filed. Uh, once the user modify the GSTR2, then uh, GSTR1 is generated and accepting and rejecting again the modification available in GSTR1A, the final GST, uh, uh, GSTR1 return amended and uh, stand as a final return which has to be filed by the user. So this process was initially introduced by the government, but somehow it, is, it didn't work. User only filed the GSTR1 return, GSTR2 return has to be supposed to be submitted and based on that return 3 was supposed to be auto generated, uh, but the government introduced the form 3B and 3B, uh, by the way, government is introducing this 3B form on, a quad, on every quarter basis, means they introduce, the, they say that we are extending the period of 3B for three months and after that every three months they are extending the time. But the, after the introduction of a new GSTR return, now from 1st July government is saying they will uh, remove this 3B return uh, by the end of this year. So 3B return is has to be filed 
there is a no gst r2 has to be filed and there is a no 3 return is generated so far only 3b is filed based on that input credit is claimed and 3 uh, gst r1 basis uh, the invoice and liability is determined so this is the uh, original process current process and new process So original return, uh, every uh, GSTR1 has to be filed by 10th of the month. Current process is same. Still, you have to file the GSTR1 by 10th. And going forward, uh, you have to upload your invoices by 10th of the next month. So uh, the difference is currently, you, if you are filing a return for the particular month, suppose for April, you will upload only invoices till April. But going forward, you will upload invoices till 10th of May. So that is the difference uh, which will be there. Uh, again, a return is uh, divided into a monthly return or a quarterly return. Current process is a monthly return. But going forward, the, the assessee, those who tur whose turnover are below 5 crore, they need not to file a return on a monthly basis. They can file return on a quarterly basis. Uh, then accepting, rejecting, pending, modify all invoices, ITC can be claimed by 15th of the of the particular uh, next month. 15th of the month, you can file the GSTR2. Uh, so currently, GST2 process has been scrapped and government is asking for 3B return only. Uh, going forward, you have to do it by 20th of the next month. You have to accept. Uh, reject the invoices, pending invoices, that you have to do by 20th of the month. This is another one change. Uh, then uh, uh, user has to file currently, the uh, user has to file the GSTR 3 return by 20th of the month. That was the originally planned. Currently, you have to file 3B by 20th of the month. And going forward, uh, the auto generated returns will be uh, that will be generated and you have to validate that return uh, detail of sale and purchase will automatically summarize in a single return you have to pay make a payment and then file a monthly return by 20th of the next month so this is the overall change government has made in the return process going forward there are other changes as well uh, which i will uh, discuss you and maybe uh, let you know on that part that how the government is introducing a major changes in the return as well. So dynamic AX, how we are handling this? Currently, we are handling this uh, process in a two way. Uh, one is we have provided a format of the one of the GSP clear tax. So clear tax is one of the leading GSP in India. Uh, so we have we have provided their format for GSTR 1 and 2. In this case, the user will generate a GSTR 1 and 2 in the format provided by ClearTax and then they will submit the forms to the ClearTax and ClearTax will uh, distribute and maybe regenerate certain files like B2B, B2C, export. They will divide your transaction in a different sheet and upload on the government portal. So you need not to do anything. You just have to generate a data in GSTR 1 and 2 format which is a CSV format and hand it over to other clear tax and there the clear tax will take care of the further requirement like they will generate HSN summary for you, they will generate a document summary for uh, for any of the CSV. So that is the the one thing which clear tax will take care and that is the one process, one option we provided to the customers. Then second option is the offline tool. So government introduced the offline tool 1 and offline tool GSTR 2. Offline GSTR 1 contains the, all the outward supply and GSTR offline tool 2 contain all the uh, inward supply details. So in GSTR offline tool, initially government introduced the GSTR 1 and after one year, government introduced the GSTR 2 return. And as you know that the government has suspended the GSTR2, so we have not delivered the GSTR2 offline tool. We only delivered the GSTR offline tool 1 uh, through our system. So user can generate an offline tool where the we provided around 10 CSV file will generate. And these CSV file will contain the uh, uh, 
B to B, B to C, and B to C. All the transactions, exports, transactions, exempted sales, and all this uh, details will come based on the uh, uh, the file format provided by the government. But again, government uh, last year uh, end of the month December introduced few more changes in the GSTR offline tool, and these changes are they have added the receiver name, they added the uh, for leasing transactions. Uh, there is a, some specific percentage of tax on input credit is allowed, so that uh, applic effective rate of applicable uh, applicable uh, rate of tax they have introduced, and that column has been also been provided in the GSTR offline tool. Along with that, they added a uh, various uh, a revised invoice uh, uh, revised transactions detail. They added a one file for uh, every revised transaction, every type of uh, revised transaction. So we have we have, we are not uh, we have not incorporated these changes because in last year uh, mid of the last year, year government also announced that they will introduce the new GSTR return process which was delayed because of the general election in India. Uh, now these are uh, uh, the government has uploaded the prototype of these returns on the government side. And these returns are uh, supposed to be used on a trial basis from July to October quarter uh, this year. So, in view of that, we have not put much effort in the uh, updating the GSTR one offline tool. Uh, informations are generating. You can copy and paste these details uh, from the generated files directly into the government file as well. That is the one workaround. And uh, or you can make a modifications. As we suggested, we guided and we uploaded uh, some video how you can extend the uh, these uh, configurations for the uh, GSTR one and GSTR two and offline tool. How you can make extensions there that we also published. So uh, in the configurations, we have uh, report configurations. Earlier, where you were using the version twelve. Now the latest version is version fourteen. And there is a uh, fixed hierarchy which you have to follow when you are uh, importing these configuration in your system. So you have to follow this particular pattern: uh, GSTR return version 14, then GST return model mapping, GST uh, GSTR 1 14.27. This is the version of that. Then GSTR 2 file. So in this sequence, you have to import uh, the configuration in your system, and based on that. You have to enable these configurations, and then you can generate your uh, return for the desired period. Uh, one important thing which I would like to highlight earlier before generating a, a one return one is uh, in the GSTR one offline uh, uh, tool, uh, the ten files are generated, and we provided a one additional file. Where there is a no HSN code is provided, all those transactions will flow into the, that particular additional file, and you can manually take action on those items. So that is the one additional sheet is there, which is not prescribed by the government. In addition to that, there are 10 CSV files which are as per the government format. There is a one file which government introduced very late, and that is the exempted sales, zero rated sales, and non GST sales, where the transactions. Uh, only summary has to be displayed. Uh, this was not initially introduced by the government, so we have not uh, provided this particular sheet. And this sheet was introduced, I think, uh, six or eight months back by the government as well. So, except this, everything is available uh, for the return in the uh, Dynamics 365 application. Uh, so, I will take you through uh, how you will import these. Uh, return. So, uh, meanwhile, this is opening. I I will just add you certain things. So, uh, in the in the new return process. In the new return process, uh, document summary 
uh, will not be uh, there. So the government has uh, uh, removing, government is going to remove the uh, uh, document Prabha. summary because. Prabha, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're just seeing your desktop screen. We don't actually see your demo. No, you are not seeing that. No, nope, we're seeing your sign on screen. There we go. Now. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here uh, in the application, you first, as I uh, stated, you have to import the reporting configurations and report configurations. You have to go to the, uh, you have to go to the workspaces and under the workspaces, you have to go to the electronic reporting. And in reporting, you have the reporting configuration. And here you import your file one by one. And first I import the GSTR return 14. So after this file, I will import the GSTR return model mapping file, which is the second file. I go to the exchange tab here again. I click on the load on load XML file. I browse the file and I go to the my second file, which is this file, particular file, and I, I, and I import this file as well. Now I import the GSTR1 CSV file, which has the version After this, I import the uh, GSTR2 CSV version file. Then we GSTR return government. And I am telling you these sequence because I got a lot of queries regarding this. What would be the sequence? How to import it? Then I uh, download the GST or return government model uh, mapping file. or in the end, I upload. GSTR1 government CSV file. So all the imported file, you can see the government uh, GSTR return government model files are here. And GSTR return model CSV1 GSTR2 file will be there. So after this, you have to go to the your text module. Text setup. 
and then you have to go to the configuration here and under the report configurations you have to select the report configurations here you can see the, all the three imported files which you uh, all the seven files you imported are divided into a gscr1 gscr2 and gscr1 government offline tool you can click edit here and then you can select the file here gstr1 and then you have to save it After doing this, uh, you have to generate your return. And you go to the uh, again text module, and there, uh, under the sales tax report, you have the GER uh, export to GSTR CSV file. You have to open this dialog box, and there you select a date range. And then you have to select the registration number for which you are looking to generate a GSTR report. Then uh, you have to select the, the configuration. Suppose you are generating a GST uh, R01. And then you have to give a path here, uh, which could be And this has to be zip file only. And when you click OK, system will generate a file for you. Let's save it here. When I open it, you can see the five files are generated here. Invoice and bill of supply file. Uh, another file is credit and debit note file. There is a one more file, advanced receipt file, and advanced multiple uh, advanced receipt adjustment file, and one is the refund file. So invoice and bill of supply file contains all the supply detail, outward supply detail you will find here. Invoice date, invoice number, customer name, customer uh, customer uh, place of supply, uh, whether it's a goods or service. So all the details will be here, uh, which, uh, which and it contains a lot of fields which actually take care of your sales register. So it contain all the details of uh, uh, the uh, your uh, outward supply. The another is a debit and credit note, which this file contain the credit and debit note file detail. Another is a advance receipt because government said that when you receive the advance from any customer you have to deduct the tax on that so those advanced detail has to be disclosed in a separate sheet will automatically generate that sheet and if you are adjusting the advance in the month in which you are giving then the, there is no problem but if the advance is given in the one month and adjustment is done against advance in another month then adjustment sheet which is provided here will contain the information and if you are refunding the advance back to the customer, then the refund sheet will have information. So these are the five files which is generated. And these five files are related to clear tax format. So all these five files has to be submitted to the clear tax and they will file a return for you. Uh, then maybe possibly we can also generate uh, offline tool which contains some files as well so i go back and generate a offline tool and here i generate gst offline tool and this will contain 10 files so i open it 
and you can see it contains the b2b file b2cl file uh, b2cl means b2c customer file where the large volume of there large volume means more than 2.5 lakhs uh, b2c is small which where the transaction is less than 2.5 lakhs cdnr is a credit note uh, then uh, there is a document summary is generated hsn summary is generated and then there is a export details as well generated so you can see the uh, all the files which prescribed here except the exempt supply details are not there so if there is an exempt non gst sales zero rated supply is there that you have to fill manually uh, going to the government side then you see hsn summary without inventory file is there and this file is provided uh, uh, so that those transactions in which the hsn code is missing you can manually take some action and filter out your transactions and file the uh, uh, file the details to the government so that's why this is the additional file which is not part of the government return is provided here similarly for gstr2 uh, same uh, five files will generate one file will be related to uh, uh, again for the uh, our, uh, inward supply then remaining four files related to same credit note debit note advance i generate as well this file so similarly here invoice and bill of supply file uh, all the five files will be generate this will contain all the invoice detail here and you can see here the invoice number invoice date now we are getting a lot of uh, uh, query from the market where the people want to to have an additional column here and they can do the those they can do additions of these columns uh, there will be another session on within this week where you can see how the you can add those columns here and can flow the information so these reports are a configurable report where you can add the column by your own and certain uh, uh, sse want to add certain uh, more information here uh, which you can do that but one thing is if you add any column uh, which is not required by the government so in the government offline tool you cannot add a column because government has a specific number of the column and if you do certain additions there then it would be difficult for government to identify your information so it is not advisable to add any column in the gst offline tool you can add these columns into the gstr1 and gstr2 returns where uh, the clear text can ignore the columns information uh, and they can pick the the information required to file the return so in gstr1 and 2 you are free to add any information any columns and it is advisable you can do that so that the reconciliation process become easier for you but if you add these columns into the offline tool then it is difficult to uh, to directly upload those files uh, on the government portal so now back to uh, presentation mm, there uh, i will uh, these are the files format uh, which uh, which are there which i we even discussed with you so now what is the new simplified gst return and this is important because current process uh, from 1st of november is going to be stopped and the new process will introduce there are some more changes government is working dynamically that is the government is introducing the e way bill uh, government is introducing the e invoicing process e invoicing process is b to b transactions it will be mandatory to generate a e invoice and that particular invoice will automatically flow in the in your return process it will automatically upload on the government portal and you need not to do anything on that so all b to b transactions is going to be uh, uh, controlled by the government and government will control your outward supply details from january 2020 but before that uh, we have to file the return and there the government has done a massive change again 
government is removing the uh, multiple return and introducing a single return there the sales and purchase detail will come into a single return for that you have to file a, a return where the annexure 1 and annexure 2 is there annexure 1 contains the, all the details of your outward supply annexure 2 will contain all the details of inward supply there so some of the salient feature of this particular new process will be the input tax credit on purchase and sales can be claimed on the pending action of supplier like if if you your supplier in, uh, upload all the invoice detail you can accept and reject those details and based on the accept and rejected whatever number of invoices you accepted your input credit will be determined you can claim your supplier can claim upload the information till 10th of the next month and then you can take action from 11 to 20th you can reject or maybe accept or whatever the action you can take so this is up to 20th and whatever the details like 10th means up till the 10th of the next month the details will be uploaded and the credit will be available for those invoices uploaded on the return, uh, on the government portal now missing invoices reporting of missing invoices uh, also uh, introduced by the government earlier what was happening if you have certain invoices you will report missing invoices suppose april invoices you can report in september uh, but those invoices will not relate back to uh, to, uh, to april so those invoices will be displayed and action needs to be taken in the month in which they, these invoices are reported but going forward if you suppose you have file your april invoices in the month of september then the respective invoices will be appearing in the april month and your april liability will be displayed which you have to pay off along with the september liability so when you file your april invoices in september your april and september liability will be determined you will club the liability make a payment to the government but in the respective month the liability will display then government is also introducing some amendment of the return process if you have filed the return incorrectly some invoices are incorrectly or missing invoices you can do an amendment in the return which is not available currently currently you need not to file if there is a no liability nothing is there you need not to file a nil return but going forward if there is a no input credit no liability even then you have to file the nil return so that is the sum of the major changes which are coming already introduced by the government only the details format uh, are awaited from the government side these three months will be the trial period and one has to uh, check those formats and provide feed and they can provide a feedback to the government as well so this will be the new filing process this is a summarization of the process if your turnover if any business turnover is less than 5 crores uh, they can file a uh, quarterly return need not to file a monthly return but if the turnover is more than 5 crores you have to mandatory file the normal return monthly return you have no option to file the quarterly return uh, even though you have you are eligible for quarterly return you can file the return monthly there is no restriction that you can do that Uh, but if your turnover is less than 5 crore you can opting for a quarterly return in that case you have to pay tax monthly your payment of tax will be monthly you will file the return on a quarterly basis uh, so this particular diagram you can see that opting the quarterly filing and the options are there and these options are you have a sahaj return you have a sugam return and you have the normal quarterly return so any person any company has to file a quarterly return but if you, there are this uh, uh, sugam and sahaj return which are very short like one pager returns but there you cannot claim the itc on a missing invoices and that would be the disadvantage there because if you opt for a sahaj and sugam return you cannot file the you cannot claim the input credit for the missing invoices so this is a simplified process government is going to uh, gradually doing the simplification of a return filing process and it will impact the 
the filing in the to a application as well and where you have to be a little bit patient as well because uh, you have to keep some patience so that we can incorporate some changes and can uh, provide some details as well now you can see uh, this return process i stated annex year 1 and this annex year 1 is not much different of uh, different of today uh, what we generate uh, gst r1 uh, almost similar but there are certain changes which government is bringing like you have to report the inward supply and the reverse charge earlier these inward supply detail has to be disclosed in the gst r2 but now it will come in annex year 1 so that is the one change which they have introduced here they have removed the outward supply uh, they have removed the the document summary detail hsn summary government is still saying the four uh, four digits but the discussion is on on where the government can ask for a six digit hsn code as well and hsn summary will be generated by the uh, portal so hsn summary uh, detail is need not to be uploaded but the Uh, uh there is no clarity on that whether the hsn summary will be generated by the government portal government also stated that government will issue a offline tool new format and these formats uh, along with the in the format government will also provide a auto reconciliation mechanism where the uh, your purchase details can, uh, can be matched with the government detail and discrepancies can be highlighted by the government tool so as per the government uh, clarifications on the notifications government will provide a reconciliation tool as well in an next year 2 uh you can accept and reject uh, the uh, pending action is there as i stated you uh, the you can do a multiple payment of multiple liability once you have uploaded because government is now saying you can upload the invoices on a daily basis and once you have uploaded your liability will be determined if you suppose you are not filing your return but you have uploaded your invoice detail government will determine your liability and ask you and force you to make a payment do a payment so it is not like that if you are not filing a return your liability will be skipped this will not happen and you have to uh, pay your liability similarly if you have not uploaded the invoice detail but the buyer want to take a input credit so government is allowing to claim that but there is a time period under which uh, the invoice has to be uploaded by the supplier and if the invoices are not uploaded and when these invoices are uploaded you have to do a reversal as well for the credit which you have already claimed so those are the certain things which government is introducing to make the reconciliation process easier and uh, uniform and maybe uh, universal across the uh, across the country and then based on the annex year 1 and annex year 2 uh your return will one will generate most of the information will auto populate but still there will be few information which you can uh, provide manually there to the government and the invoice declaration for like a small uh, a small traders uh they they have to declare they have to make a payment on a monthly basis and those liability will be on a self declaration basis uh they have they have to determine their liability and the government will trust them and accept whatever the payment they will make so this is a simplified simplification of a process the another important thing is you know that there are a lot of returns earlier introduced by the government like a gst r4 is a comp uh, uh, for a composition vendor gst r5 for a non resident tax payers there is a gst r6 isd where is the input service distribution return has to be filed then there is gst 7 which is for tds gst r8 for tcs then there is a annual return process as well gst r9 9a and 9b and 9c returns are there so many returns are there uh the so government actually removing the gstr 6 gstr 7 gstr 8 4 5 all these returns are uh, going to be merged with the normal return so that means the information related to tds information related to isd will be part of the annex year 1 and 2 so that is one of the important thing these returns will vanish and these informations by default will be available in annex year 1 and 2 
Now, this is the comparison of uh, uh, various return profile for new simplified GST process. Uh, normal return has to be filed by uh, mandatory if the turnover is more than 5 crores. If the, it is less than, then even the person can select the, uh, any of the return, they can file that. Uh, they can opt for a monthly and they can go for a uh, quarterly as well. Sahaj, if your turnover is uh, less than 5 crore, you can go for a Sahaj and Sugam return. And there only you have to disclose the B2C and non-e-commerce related transactions. So type of sales should be non-e-commerce transaction. If you have an e-commerce transaction, you, ha you have to file the, the normal return there. Then filing frequency monthly, quarterly, and quarterly. Uh, the payment frequency will be monthly. Even though whatever mechanism you follow, you have to make payment to the government on a self-declaration basis, self-assessment basis, you have to make a payment to the government. Then uh, return upload will be uh, uh, for monthly if you, for B2B. Uh, if, if, even if you select the normal uh, returns there, and ITC of the missing uh, supplies. So government first six months, I think, for the introduction of this, government will allow you to claim the, you know, uh, the credit on the invoices, which are not uh, reported by the supplier. You can disclose those invoices and claim the credit. Uh, but this, this will, government will allow only for six months. And after that, the normal process will be there. You cannot report those invoices uh, missing on the portal. So that will not be available after that. Now, major impact, uh, what would be the impact? First of all, the new GSTR uh, offline tools will be released by the government. Then currently there is a no reconciliation requirement. So going forward, you have to do a reconciliation of your a purchase book with the supplier details uh, so that you can claim the maximum ITC. If the, there is a no reconciliation, certain transactions are mismatched, you cannot claim the credit of those uh, transactions and those transactions will be claimed in the next month. So that is the one thing. Second thing, uh, if the suppose invoices are reported late, if you report your April invoices in the month of September, then uh, your liability of April will also be arises there. And input credit, the, your buyer cannot claim the input credit. And again, after a particular threshold, if you uh, come and see that you are not paying tax properly, you're not disclosing your uh, invoices detail appropriately, then government will not allow you after a particular threshold to display your transaction on the portal. So your receiver, the, the person who is uh, supplying you and wanted to take a credit, they will not, your buyer will not able to take the input credit because the transaction will not display on the government portal. So that is the one thing which government is going to control. Government will have a full control on your supplies and they will put a control so that your transaction will not display. And when your transaction will not display, your receiver will not able to claim the credit and they will approach you and your business will suffer badly on that. So all these controls going to introduce in the coming months. Reconciliation process will become a little bit complex further because uh, government is uh, providing a lot of options to, to file the amendment of return, missing invoices. So if supplier does not upload after two months or quarter, then invoice for missing detail has to be disclosed in the return. Government is saying if you uh, if your supplier doesn't uh, upload your their uh, two months detail, then all the missing invoices detail has to be declared in the final return separately. And if the supplier upload in the later month, then the ITC equivalent because that has to be reversed. Because if you have claimed the uh, credit on the basis of missing invoices, and once the invoice uh, equivalent uh, when you uh, invoices are uploaded. In, uh, the ITC equivalent to the missing invoices you have to reverse. So those things will come into the picture and this will make your reconciliation process a little bit complex there. So 
these are the advanced things which one has to take care and uh, uh, in terms of application currently if you are generating a gstr1 and gstr2 uh, based on the clear text format clear text will take care of the uh, with the current format they can take care of your requirement with the government uh, in the new uh, even uh, as per the new requirement as well so those who are following the clear text format and filing the return through a clear text they need not to do uh, any action so far immediately but definitely they have to incorporate some changes in the business practice uh, going forward now this is the uh, government has uploaded the uh, um, new prototype of a new format i will i will show you as well so that you will have an idea uh, the, the how the government is introducing so government has introduced on the gst portal a new prototype for the return you can go through it so this will give you a, a, a idea of what changes are going to come and if you have any suggestion to the government the government has also uploaded a template which you can fill and provide it to the uh, to them so that possibly uh, they will make a modifications in the uh, prototype to and it will make the return filing process easier for everyone so if you see here again the government has provided instructions and provided the new prototype as well we can proceed to prototype as well where the government has provided uh, you have to fill these those basic information and after that uh, you have a options to provide a, a prepare offline and open you can through a json file as well so government will providing a two options i click on the prepare offline and here government is providing uh, various files uh, section wise file if you see the draft format of the return there are 3a 3b 3c all uh, different tables are there and for different table like b2c transactions b2b transactions export transaction sej transactions dm export transactions all transactions have a separate tables there so these tables uh, you can upload here and then these details will come here so what government will do all different tables separate csv files and you can upload these files there uh, to get the maximum benefit of uh, the information uh, minimum effort you have to put from your side and you will get a maximum benefit of the government portal where government is providing a lot of facilities so here you can select a different uh, different states and you can file a different file of returns so you can see here different details and now one thing is as i stated you a reverse charge detail has to be come into the return one so there all the liability will come there along with that the import detail and sej detail will also come into the return one so th those are the few changes which is coming there and which you have to have a look there uh, all, also the isg supply details will go there again the uh gst tds and gst tcs related transactions detail will be there so no additional uh, return related uh, information you have to file one thing which is very important here the annual return process will remain same as indicated by the government so if you have a gst r9 9a and 9b and 9c returns are there where the 9a return is uh, filed by the composition vendor uh 9 uh, b return is filed by the e-commerce operators and 9 c return where the you have to do your account audited there you have to file the reconciliation process and these are the annual returns so if you see in our uh, dynamics when we generate a return you can provide a time range like right? you can provide a date range there and there if you select the one year frame the system will generate you all the transaction for a one year perspective and then based on that uh, you can provide those details to clear tax they can file your annual return as well so there is a no need to have a separate format for annual return 
but we will see if the government introduce uh, some changes in the annual return and they make it annual return process also automated then we will look into that how we can provide a features for you to file the annual return as well but currently there is a it seems that there is a no additional requirement for uh, annual return so this is the like uh, overall uh, picture of uh, gst so thank you uh, if you so this cover the the high level process of uh, gst and coming month will be a little uh, uh, challenging in, in in terms of filing of the return because you have to uh, uh, acquaint yourself with the new process where the government uh, uh, is inviting you to try these prototype as well so if you have any questions you can forward me or uh, you can send me as well or you can uh, put on chat window where we can respond on that as well thank you janice over to you all right thank you prabha all right ladies and gentlemen if you do have any questions go ahead and pop those into the q a panel and prabha and susan will address those as they come in in the meantime i'd like to bring your attention to a short or to a link that i posted in the q a panel that's a link to a short survey for this web conference and we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it we hope that you found today's information helpful and if you enjoyed today's web conference have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event or you would like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. We do appreciate the time you take to do this and thank you for your support. I'm gonna go ahead and check the Q&A panel to see if there are any questions that have come in. I have not seen any at this moment, so that is going to conclude today's web conference. The recording and a copy of the presentation deck will be available within five business days. Please look for an email from Learning Media that will include details on how to access them. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters, Prabha and Susan, and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.